Okay, we have the one and the only uh, Josh on here. Josh the Boxer. How's it going, brother? Hey, it was good. How y'all doing? We're good, brother. We're doing really, really good. Really, yes, really good. Sir. Okay, can you talk to us about you know the real war? Man, talk to us about your nickname to start off, brother. Uh, yeah, my nickname, the real war. It came from cause, like, uh, I went by the name of Hands of Stone, which was Roberto Duran's name. Uh, and me and my strength and conditioning coach at the time, her name was Sh Sharon Baker. Um, she trained under Brother Nazem, so she had me wear as though, like, uh, she like, you like to go to war a lot when you're sparring and stuff. Like, yeah, I'm like, shit, I got to make everything a war, like, everything I'd have been through, you know, with life and all that. She like, your name should be the real war. So she actually came up with that name for me, and I just took it and ran with it. Cool, cool. So, Josh, uh, talk to us about um, how you got started in boxing. Like, where, uh, when did you pick it up? And, uh, you know, did you love it immediately? No. Nah, uh, boxing actually was a punishment for me. Um, mm. com coming oh, up is that kid, right? Yeah, coming up as a kid, my dad was like, uh, when I was younger, he was like in and out of jail, so, um, he, he seen me one day fighting, uh, getting into the fight on the corner of my block. And I was always fighting in school. So he like, you like to fight a lot. I'm like, yeah, why not? Like, he like, uh, I'm gonna take you somewhere where they like to fight at. So I'm like, where you going to take me at? Like, you know, fight. Like I love fighting. So he took me into a boxing gym. You know, it started out as me just going into the gym. Then he, uh, I sparred. I actually sparred my first day in there. Um, I met this kid named Chris, and I boxed him. And he he dropped me. He dropped me with a body shot. And I uh I was crying and all that. Like, Dad, I don't want to box no more, Dad. Like, because it, it hurt it, you know. So, <laughs> and my brother, my brother was on the sideline. Like, quit, quit. Like, you tell me to quit. Like, leave it alone, bro. Like, so I'm like, uh. Nah, I ain't gonna stop. My dad gave me like a test. He told him like, "This your punishment. If you can beat the kid that that dropped you, you can stop boxing." Mm. And uh, sure enough, I trained for like two to three weeks. Trained real hard. Came in the gym every day. Went running with my dad afterwards. Um, and I came and I I did what I had to do to the ball. I dropped. I actually dropped him. And my dad, like, yeah, you can stop boxing if you want to. I'm like, nah, dad, I like boxing. boxing. <laughs> so I That's... kept going. I kept it going then after that. Like, Got you. Yeah, no. I, just, I made it into, you know, it became, like, what I really wanted to do. Because he, like, if you keep doing it, then, but you can't play with it. You got to go full, like, full throttle with it. Like, there ain't, ain't going to be no outside or nothing. We're going to make this, like, your life if this is what you want to do. And that's what I decided I wanted to do. Now, being from Philly, we usually hear, like, those those tough gyms out there. There's usually wars in the sparring sessions. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, you got any war stories for us? Um, You know, my name is a real war. So I actually, like, I, I try to go to war all the time. It's... Like the gym where I'm at, I, I train with Jerron and this uh, Stephen Coolboy Steph and us. Like it's basically like it ain't no wars. We don't we don't go to war with each other. You know, we just we we see each other as competition. You know, but we help each other get to the next level where we need to be. Cool, cool. Yeah, so, I, it's a it's a lot of other gyms that they go to war with each other and all that. Like yeah. we, we don't do that. You hear a lot of that out there in Philly. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You know, I don't, I don't like going into the gym where it's feel like I it gotta. It's gonna be a war. Yeah. Like it's, it's supposed I to got, be practice, anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's why. That's why I look at it. Uh huh. Because I yeah. want to work on things. I don't want to just be trying to knock somebody head off. Nah. I want to ask you something now. Um, being from Philly, now if I have to, I will though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of legendary fighters come out from where from where you're from. Um, which one was your favorite, and, and which one do you uh, pattern your style after the most? Um, from Philly, 
Um, I my favorite is growing up as a kid. Don't say Rocky. Nah, 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 nah. All right. <laughs> nah, growing up as a kid, I came up under Joe Frazier, and you know I was training with him. So he taught us the the uh, the Joe Frazier hook and all that. You know he used to train us on Saturdays and everything. And even as he got older, he always still like trained us and, and kept us around. So, so he was what like he was my favorite. Um, but as I got older, you know, my era became like the Danny Garcia's, the the Julian Williams, the uh, the Rasheen Jefferson, the Carl Dynamite Dargins, and stuff, and and so on. So I started watching a lot of Julian Williams and a lot of Danny Garcia. Julia Williams is actually my favorite of uh, my era. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you about Joe, uh, Joe Frazier. I heard stories, uh, I don't know how accurate they were, that, that he was living in the gym. Was, yeah. Was that true? Yeah. 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 He had, it was apartments and stuff upstairs, you know. Okay. But he stayed, like, his office was in the back of the gym. He lived in the back of his office. He had like a room back there with a TV, all that. He stayed there, like, cause all he knew was watching. His family had okay. homes and stuff. They had houses and stuff that they owned, but he ain't never want to go nowhere. Okay, so it wasn't like a, I guess because when people say, "Man, Joe Frazier living in the gym," that they picture like the locker room and like, yeah, like yeah, sheets yeah. in the bottom and on the concrete floor or something like that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, hey, little. Um, so, but so he he had a pretty good spot there, or, or at least decent, like a, like a bed, TV. It's where he wanted to be. Huh? Like, do you what think that? that's where he wanted to be? Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, okay. it was. Do, do, you know, you know um, when you say he touched you, the whole being for him. Okay. All right. I mean that that sounds good because I I always had like that image of like close to homeless but but he's just living in the gym you know, you know what i mean like that's kind of the the image i had so it's good to see you know it's where he wanted to be and he was training kids like yourself and stuff like that um yeah. how was how was he as a instructor let's call him like was he strict was he like you know he was strict easy going he was strict no nah, he wasn't easy go he was strict he didn't like long hair he didn't like breeds uh he didn't like loud, like uh, he didn't like the new school of music or nothing. Like we had to train, and then we had to do throw his hook. We had to do his way of training. Okay. Yeah, but it played a major part, you know. How he helped you develop your own style, but we're using his hook. So, uh, Josh, you do have a fight scheduled on the twenty fourth at the twenty three hundred arena, correct? Yes. But you don't have your opponent yet, correct? Um, they, they actually just was talking to my trainer about an opponent. Okay. And so they have settled on one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, from what I'm hearing, yeah, they settled on one. Oh yeah. Who, who you going to, you going to give that to us? I don't know. I don't know his name. I didn't even ask my trainer his name. Oh, you don't. So it's, so you don't have to like train for anybody. You don't like really watching film on your opponents or anything like that. No. Okay. How do you keep that intensity though in training? You know, when you're I, working towards a certain fighter or goal or. Uh, my training them, uh, probably study or watch his fights and stuff. Got you know, you. I just go off of what they tell me, and I always train intense. I train like I'm getting ready for a title fight or something. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to, but that's how I train. You know. Okay. All right. You know, yeah, I just if, stay ready to prepare for anything. Yeah, absolutely, of absolutely. Of course. Uh, JC, I appreciate that super chat, brother. Much appreciated. It's uh, 8CP. Um, you know, when, whenever your career is over, right, and, and someone writes a book about yes. your career, once they're done with that book, yes. what, what do you want them to come out thinking about you? Like, what, what, what lesson, what, what, you know, what, how are they going to remember you? Um, as, a warrior, a motivational warrior. You know, cause I um uh, I like to motivate people. You know, people to do like not saying I'm doing great. You feel me? But I be I always want people to 
look at me and be like, oh, he's a great inspiration, but also do better, you know, than whatever I do. And and I also want him to remember me as a warrior, you know, exciting. Okay. So, because if you're familiar with Meldrick Tater, he was from Philadelphia. He had a, a fight of the year yes. with Julio Cesar Chavez. He was winning the fight, and then he got knocked out in a controversial fashion, but they stopped Richard Steele. The referee stopped the fight with a couple seconds to go. Right. Um, one of the criticisms some, some yeah. um, pundits had about him was he should have just boxed him a little more. He shouldn't have engaged as much. And while it's, it's up to debate whether that was a choice or not, it, it was perceived that it was that Philadelphia, you know, heart, you know, that Philadelphia, you know, wanting to go out there and fight like Philadelphia fighters do. Do you carry some of that with yeah. you? You know, like where you want to fight, like you, you don't want to just, you know, you know, box and, you know, and do you see that as, you know, as a good thing, bad thing? Like, how do you see that? I carry it, but you got to know in the right time to use it. Can't have too much of it. You know? Okay. Because sometimes your heart can be a downfall. Now you had a you had a period of inactivity from like 2017 to 2020. Yeah. Were there any issues going on there? Did, were you thinking about maybe stepping away for a while, or what was the situation for uh, with that? Nah, I uh, I actually was going through some things where I lost oh, okay. my uh, my big brother. My oh, uncle, sorry to hear that. My big brother, my uncle, and my cousin that was like my brother that was living with me at all in the yeah. same year. So I needed a mental break. I got you. Sorry yeah. to hear that, brother. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry. For some time, just to get my head together, because they was like close people to me while I was in the sport. Gotcha. Always was always around me in the gym and everything. Got any questions, you funky? No, I just you know I just I, I'm always interested in the history of that of that city. Of, I mean, rich rich history over there in Philadelphia. Yeah. With fighters and stuff like that, it's cool to, to hear you talk about uh, smoking Joe. Though that's man, <laughs> I bet that was something to meet him in person. You know? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. I loved him. I run into you run into Bernard Hopkins down there at all? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I, sorry I, Mario. Bernard. Oh, I, sorry. I, I actually trained with him before at uh, uh down Spring Garden at Joe Hayden's gym before. You know, mm. and I he run into him. He got a vegan spot down in Frankfurt. So I, I bumped into him a couple times. Yo, I, I got one more. Um, you had mentioned, you know, training with boots and everything. Uh, I, we had seen in uh, on his social media about him posting, you know, being moving up to 160 possibly, or at least just moving up, period. Um, training with him, being able to see him every day, is that something you can envision for him to jump up that far? I mean, is he that big? Is he that strong? Do you think that's really on the plans? Yeah, that, that kid, he, he's strong. He's strong. Yeah? yeah? So if he were to move up now, you think he survives? I mean, I mean not just survives, but thrives yeah, at the 154, 160. Hell yeah. Wow. Okay, you think he's really doing it? Nah, he, he, <laughs> he, I don't know. You never know. But I don't not right now. Got it. Who wins right now? Boots Ennis or Errol Spence? Boots Ennis. Mm. <laughs> Rep in oh. Philly all day. Yeah, Man, that's Ennis. representing hard right there. You know? Yeah, that kid different. That kid different. That's what and, we keep and hearing. The better, and the better the fighter y'all put in front of you. I got to be honest. I like him a lot. I like him a lot just by yep. watching him. Yeah, you can tell that that guy can fight, man. Yeah. Tremendous talent for listen, sure. Every time, this is each time. Like I watch him even spar. The better the fighter is, the better you're going to see him. I watch him spar world champion at his weight. So that's boxing. That's boxing's potential new next pound for pound king down the road. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, if Bostrick is correct, that uh, you are a southpaw, correct? Yeah. Okay, okay. Do, do you get a lot South of calls ball. for sparring because you're a South Pole? I could switch up. Okay. Nah, I I, I was getting a bunch of calls at one point, but when, when I went inactive, 
and it came back. It wasn't like a lot of calls calling, but pretty soon I know they're going to be calling again because I'm back active and I'm like physically like I'm training and I work with one of the best in Philly now. So okay. it's going to start being a lot. It has been a lot of people coming down just to work with me. Okay. Do, do you still think in in 2021, do, do you still think that the old adage that the, that the Southpaw has the advantage, do you still think that's true today? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I see it. I, mean, I, I see it in the gym. I see it in fights. But okay. it's for some fighters. It's for some fighters because it's other fighters that can adjust to it. So... You know, certain right-handed fighters are southpaw killers, and as they say. Now, now you said you could switch up. Is, is that something you worked on, or is that just natural? Like, are you able? Do you write with both hands? Like, do you? Is it's something I worked on a little bit? Okay. I worked on it a little bit in sparring in the gym. I actually tried it in a fight and perfected it. So. I do it in the fights a lot. I do it more in the fights than I do in the gym. All right. All right. Okay. How, how long do you, uh, like, you're a lightweight, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how long uh, do you join, plan join to stay there? Like, uh, for a while, or are you going to be moving up soon? Like, how, how's the wait for you? Uh, You know, the pandemic, I had put on a lot of weight, so... This is actually me working my way back down to lightweight just to see where my body is. But if I don't feel right at lightweight, I'm going to stay. I'm going to go back up to junior lightweight and stay there for a while. Yeah, okay. because for those that don't know, he, uh, you in your last fight in 2021 in January, you weighed 145 and a half, correct? Yeah, yeah, 40 at 47. And that was you working your way back down. So so you're still – you plan on getting a little – what's the next fight scheduled at weight-wise? 140. 140 on the dot. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. I'm going to wait now. But, but ideally you want to go back to lightweight, right? That's where you want to campaign? Yeah, I want to I wanna try, you know, see how I feel. Okay. How do you feel at 140? Strong. I strong. feel strong. I feel good. Yeah. I can eat what I want. Yeah. Now, make a war. I mean, you, you are from what it shows me here. And I always say that because sometimes fighters have actually said, oh, box trick's wrong. So that's why I'm kind of wording it that way. But it's showing me that you're 28, you know, and every day, of course, the hourglass doesn't stop, right? So what, what, what's the plan to, you know, to, to get to that top 25 or something ASAP? Like, what, what what's the plan with you and your team? You know, uh, we just we just hit getting on, getting on, getting the ball rolling. You know, trying to fight as many times as we can. Okay. Uh, you know, whenever it's possible, we've been working with a couple, with a couple uh, people with like promoters and managers and stuff. So pretty soon that ball gonna be rolling. So I, I'll be there. I'll be there sooner than people know it. Okay. Now, uh, you, you mentioned Spence earlier, yeah, right? Uh, you, you you believe that that Boots will beat him. What about Pacquiao? Do you think Pacquiao has a shot against Spence, in your opinion? I think time going to kick in. Five to time going to kick in this fight, Pacquiao. You know, sometimes, because, like, he he been looking. Pacquiao's been looking all right, but he hasn't been looking, like, the Pacquiao from before, you know, like you can see like the difference in him. Like he don't he don't move as much as he used to. Right. So I believe that Earl is going to touch that body and is going to slow him down, or break him down. He he, right. he bigger than uh, like height wise, he taller, all that. Like, think the fight goes a distance? No. No. Uh. Uh. -uh. No. I see. I, th I think it does, but a lot of people don't think it will. Yeah. Hey, hey, Josh. There's a big I fight. Said I love Pacquiao. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pacquiao's great. There's a big fight this weekend 
undisputed at 154 pounds, Jermel Charlo, right, against, you know, Brian Castano from Argentina. Who do you believe will win that fight, brother? Talk to the fans. Who's going to win that fight? You said, you said who? Brian Castano, Castano and Jermel Charlo for undisputed this Saturday. Jermel. Jermel, okay. Yeah, I'm going with Jermel Charlo. It's the favorite. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know he the favorite, and like the Charlos, they're big on punchers too. So you never know what to expect with them behind their power. Right. A lot of people can't take their power. Like mm. they get in there, they get in there at first, but once they start getting touched, it's, it's, it's a whole different ball game. That's what we saw in the Rosario and the Yurdan fight right. for sure. Do you think that Mel? moves up after this do you think he's conquered everything else or do you realistically see him staying there and defending belts uh i think he gonna stay there what would you do i'll move up <laughs> yeah that's what i would do i, I keep telling yeah. people yeah, i'll move up but you know they still got boo boo injury and all that to fight that they don't want to fight yeah that's true that's a fair point I have uh, to wait one. for that. So you can't, you can't say you conquered everything to, to you beat everybody, you know? Right. Still I have one more question myself. Okay. I have one more question for you, Josh. You know, yeah. when it comes to this boxing thing, because boxing is not easy. It's it's a difficult sport to do, period. And it's it's yeah. it's that much more difficult to reach the top to be extremely successful at it, and and reach those six digit figure paydays or whatnot. But if this yeah. boxing thing doesn't work out for you, do you have a backup plan, or is this like all the marbles are are in here? Like what? Yeah, I have. A, I always you know set up for a backup. You know. Okay. I've been always going to business for myself to be a trainer. You know, I started my LLC for my real war gear. I uh, sell fitness clothing. Um, I also do like handyman work. You know, I got I got a lot of things that I'm good at besides boxing. But everything I do is for is for boxing. You know, that's my main focus. That's what I love to do. So everything else come after. So, so you, you, you said you have a backup plan. And I want to, I want to give you this example. So, when, when Kata Plant was going to fight the, the subway guy, I forgot his name, but right, he in yeah. at the press conference, Caleb said, "Look, all I got is boxing. Like, I don't got yeah. anything else. This guy over here, he's got an education. Yeah. He has a lot of other things. I, this is all I got. So that's going to yeah. give me the advantage. That, like, do you think?" Fighters that this is the only thing they have, they don't have a backup plan like yourself. Do you think they, they have an advantage over you in the ring? No, because basically boxing, like I I made these I made these plans recently, you know. I made these plans recently because we don't know what time it is. But I still got the hunger. I still want it. And I still can fight. I'm still willing to fight. I'm still willing to go to war. I'm still willing to, to do anything to win, you know? There we go. There we and go, then, then man. then I'm still where I'm at, where I've been at, still in the struggle, still in the city, you know, still where I grew up at, where where is crime and poverty, all that, you know? I'm still fighting to make a way out. There we go. So, can't nobody have this is no advantage over me with that. And, and the fight definitely continues. You know, uh, I want to definitely thank you, man. Uh, Joshua, the real war. Joe, I want to thank you for coming on. Tell everybody where they can find you on social media and, and, and all that good stuff, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Josh the Boxer. Josh, D A B O X E R, not the, the Boxer. Hey, there you go. There you go, awesome. man. Yes, uh, I want to thank you again, and we hope to have you back on in the future, maybe after your fight and all that. And you have yourself a good one, brother. 